Uh, Holy Spirit, we come before you. Thank you for the privilege of being your children and Lord, just being invited into the place of sonship, into the place of friendship, into the place of servanthood, of serving the dream, into the place of following you hard, uh, hard after you. This morning, Lord, we ask that as we have this conversation, that you will speak through my mouth, think through my mind. Lord, just use, use your deposit in me, O God, to bring out uh, just this topic that we have today well. Um, as we just begin to review business models for the rest of this next two months, we invite your spirit, we invite your leading Holy Ghost. Will you please come and have your way? Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the last couple of weeks, for some reason, I have started to consider uh, heavily why, how long I've been doing this altar in the marketplace. And Daisy, I can tell you it's been uh, since 2019, maybe September, October there. And just began to ask myself, okay, so what, what is it that we did here? And some of you who uh, said to come here lately, uh, maybe I will articulate that a bit for you. What is it that we were hoping to accomplish when we started this journey and where it is we're going? And for me, it was, when the Lord said to me, it was altar in the marketplace is really about um, because as I looked around, the thing that the Lord has showed me is how many altars are in the market and how they are determining um, what should happen in the marketplace. And what the Lord said is you need to leverage for my people's businesses um, so that they can prosper as well. And that's why we dedicated this altar to the marketplace. There are many altars fantastic altars that some of our fathers have raised for the last 30, 40 years. There are many altars that have been raised um, by the Lord, but it's like the Lord said, one that will focus primarily on the people of God while they do everyday business or while they work. So it's actually intended for both people who are in business and those who are working. You're muted, Brant. We can't hear you. All that time you couldn't hear me? No. No. Oh my goodness. Left off where you are saying about why you, uh, there's the altar in the marketplace. Oh, I got muted as I was going. I didn't realize that. Somebody muted me. I didn't. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. So I don't know where exactly I stopped. So I'm going to try and repeat that. But I was just reminding myself why is it 
that we share or we do this all time in the marketplace. And I was saying that when the Lord asked me to do this, it's like he was looking to set up a leverage for his people um, to be able to do business with, you know, just support. Um, and it was interesting that the Lord then began to even change my mission in life into what I started to realize is, is um, priesthood in the marketplace. And uh, that's become a very strong calling for me as an individual. But I have seen a lot of results uh, coming out of praying together and seeing the hand of the Lord touch lives and change lives. Touch businesses, encourage people. Um, and that is the work that by the grace of God, we are going to continue to do. And so Altered the Marketplace is designed for you, entrepreneur, or somebody who's also in the office, um, so that when you come to the marketplace, you have the leverage to progress. You have the ability to make steps forward, that you have the encouragement, you have the firepower in the spiritual. So the idea is to create an opportunity through content or what we share in terms of truth, but most importantly, through prayer. The intention for this is prayer more than it is any other thing. But we use business conversations to bring that to pass. Come with me to the book of Matthew chapter 14. And I'm sorry about that muting and I didn't realize that. I'm in Matthew chapter 14, um, verse 22. We're going to read about 10 verses. And then I'm going to introduce the rest of the content we're discussing today. The Bible says immediately Jesus made the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to another city or to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountain um, by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by waves because the wind was against it. <laughs> Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, desire, don't be afraid. Then verse 28 is very, very important. If you're reading with me there, you can say, Lord, if it is you, you see, if it's you, if it is you, Lord, if it is you, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come on the water. Then simply Jesus said, come. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and, be and beginning to sink, he cried out, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down, and those who are in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, truly, you are the son of God. I don't know if you are here in the beginning of the year. As we began, I asked everyone to bring their p &L, to bring your balance sheet, to bring your income, uh, income statement, balance sheet, and uh, cash flow statements. And I asked you, so every week in January and February, you are going through one, uh, one, one thing at a time. So we would pray for your income statement. So I wonder, how has that been? Um, has your income statement turned out right? I know several of you who are here when we were praying. And what's going on with your cash flow statement? Uh, what's going on with your balance sheet? Have you increased in assets? 
personally or for us here at Blue Flame International, we did realize, but we've moved into an office, bought furniture, um, we first decided to grow the team. In fact, um, we've become, uh, we, our balance sheet has become stronger as we've gone. Our clientele has grown, um, growth is present. Uh, we also have had some serious, serious challenges like we've not had before. And that's what I really want to talk about. When you first hear the call of business and you respond and you go for it, and we are like Peter, we say, Lord, if that is you, if that is you asking me to come and lead this company, if that is you asking me, is, if, is that you, oh God, that you are saying to me, oh God, uh, you're saying, Frank, begin to lead the people. Uh, start altering the marketplace. Or for you, it's a different thing. It's not just altering the marketplace. Maybe for you is uh, go to that new job, uh, apply for it. And in the beginning of the year, you felt this is the leading of the Lord for my life. And you know, you got into it. You said, okay, okay, Lord, I will respond. And you started to make that business. You started talking to customers. You started to, to move forward. Let me, let me say, when that begins to happen and that faith, even though things are not so easy, uh, Peter is asking Jesus to call him while Jesus is walking on what? On, on a troubled sea. Isn't that our scenario in the business? Whenever we are responding to the call of business, we are responding to the call of business not in easy circumstances. But he says to me, call me. Now, I want to give you the analogy uh, of the forest. We're going to use the trees and the forest as the basis of reviewing all the business uh, for next year. Uh, before I continue with the scripture I was speaking about in Peter, I want to just tell you what the idea for the next few months is going to be. We're gonna probably do it for two months and at the last month of December, we're going to do a Thanksgiving. So what we're gonna do is we're going to review every week, we're going to review a model. Some models you don't know, some you have experienced before. And we're going to use different models to say, so what has happened to my business so far? You know, that place where you walked with Jesus, you began, you are walking with him in the middle of the flats. You are walking with him. He said, turn left, you turn left. You, yes, it was trouble. Yes, there was COVID. Yes, there was uh, prices were going up. Yes, there was elections. Oh, whatever it is that you began to, you are walking with him. You are looking at him. You are trusting him. You are going with him. The forest is one of the places where, like no other place, there is very serious competition for light. Very serious competition. You know why the trees go slender, small leaves, and they are going up shoop, like this. Their competition for light is what causes them to go that far. When an entrepreneur um, catches a vision, feels, ah, I see this opportunity, can I go for it? When you get, you capture the vision, then you begin to go for it, is one of the most amazing things that can happen to somebody. When your eyes see the possibility of changing your circumstances or changing the world, and you say, hiya. I can change things. If Jesus can walk on water, so can I. Even I can learn how to sell. Even I can learn how to uh, manage a company. Even me, I can become my own boss. And you start to do that. And you capture a sight, you capture a vision, you capture something. That's the first place where businesses begin. The vision of the entrepreneur or the generation that's coming. They see what was seen before and they begin to run. 
Now, that's actually the issue. When you've been running in the middle of the floods, one of the problems that happens is we stop looking at where we were going. The vision was keep your eyes on Jesus, Peter. Do you know that a vision needs to be spoken to every single week in a business? If you do not constantly put the vision of the organization on the face of your team, if the vision stops being a constant reminder, it stops being the very basis for the fire to do what you do. If you're not constantly putting the image or the vision of what you saw in front of you, it is possible to be discouraged because many are the afflictions of an entrepreneur. Many are the afflictions. Today you're dealing with the team. Tomorrow you're dealing with a customer. The next day suppliers have let you down. One day you yourself, you're lacking energy. Oh, all these things will come if you miss your vision. If you don't constantly keep your eyes on the Lord, if you don't constantly keep your eyes on why did I begin this thing, if you constantly lose that, if your team no longer looks at where you guys are going, it will be impossible to keep the business model in place and in check. As soon as Peter looks around, he loses the picture. Guess what's happened? With instant, the lack of vision is the beginning of drowning. Some of the battles we get into in the marketplace or in our businesses are a reason of we stopped seeing where is it we are going. How often do you review, you entrepreneur, and with your team, with your management team, how often do you remind yourself where it is you're going? If the vision is not clear and renewed and oiled and strengthened, it is possible because of every other thing we deal with, it is possible to lose your vision and to start drowning. My friend Andrew Woman says that he, there was a friend of his who saw him in a vision. And in the vision, he saw himself running like the other people compete, you know, the way Kenyans run, and they're competing on a track. But in the competition, he sees a Romak turn, and people are shouting at him from the, and then he turns and starts to argue with these people, say, you, you're, you're telling me about this. Do you even know this? And he begins to win the arguments. In this vision, he is winning the arguments, but he's losing the race. He's losing the race. And he's forgotten for why was he apprehended. For this cause, I was apprehended. You forget this is where we were going. And then you win the argument, but you've lost the plot. Allow me to remind you today, child of God, allow me to remind you, Mr. Madam Entrepreneur, what is your vision? What did God say to you the day you rose and said, I'm going to build this thing? What did he say to you? Remind yourself that today. Remind your team what it is you're about. And what should happen? It should begin to fire you up. If we're going to review 2023 without seeing, and you just look at the everyday things as the basis for what you want to achieve next year, you are off. The first place we begin is what are we about? Why am I doing this? And you know what? Even you yourself, Mr. Madam Entrepreneur, Mr. Entrepreneur, you need to ask yourself, why do I do this myself? What is it, what, what is in it for me? So allow me to give you seven quick questions to ask about your vision. Who do we serve internally and externally? 
you need to ask that question. Who are we serving here? Keep your eye on your customer. You know, I advise, if possible, put an image of your, of your what do you call, your profile customer in front of your office, Madam CEO, Mr. CEO. Why do we serve those interests? We have to go back and check, why do I do what I do? Why do I, uh, people are motivated by meaning than money. Remind your team. Okay, so this is our customer. This is the need of our customer. This is why we are serving our customer. You need to remind yourself. Where are the boundaries of our reach? That is why we need our vision to be smart. Because sometimes you're going, it must be audacious. It must be a big hairy dream, but it must have boundaries. Because sometimes you find the way you're approaching, the way you're running business, that you are like an overflowed river. You're outside your banks and you need to cut back and go back to where were we going? How will you accomplish the vision? Remind yourself, what did we say? What were my objectives? What did I want to do? When will we know if we have succeeded? Remind yourself, I have said these things. Now, some of us have never written down the vision for the business. We're also giving you some direction here. What does that look like from all angles? Always say, okay, so I'm in my vision. What does my spouse think? What do my children think about it? What do my employees think about this vision? What do my customers think? What do the shareholders think? The most important stakeholders how do they relate, understand, communicate? And those of you who know about biblical entrepreneurship, we do something called serve with love. In our serve with love strategy, we ask ourselves, how exactly is my mission being accomplished through this 360V? Where you're asking all this. And lastly, what is our contribution to the world around us? We're checking community. The three, I've given you these seven points. Uh, let me see if I can post them on our Facebook later today. So just remind me, my team, please, um, that later you can just go to our Facebook and see these seven points of questions you ask about your vision. This is where we begin our review for 2023. So as you get ready for next year, the one point I like to say is you don't do your 2023 plan in 2023. It's too late. During your third quarter, that's when you begin to look at your vision. I mean, your fourth quarter. As the third quarter is coming to an end, fourth quarter begins, we begin to look at our vision. I want us to pray and then I will make one or two announcements. I see Clara say, who, yes, yes, yes. Who do you serve internally and externally? And we was, um, please, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, bro, please, uh, Joel, share the link of our Facebook on here. And we use Nehemiah Project. That's what you use, or you can go to Frank Kitonga, you'll also find my link there. Every week we're going to review one, one, uh, like I said, tool. Uh, we may pick uh, the BCG model. We may pick, sometimes we'll just do a simple model like the SWOT and we'll pick that, put it in the word of God and ask ourselves in this particular area, how are you getting prepared? Today we were starting with vision. As soon as Peter removed his eyes from the Lord, and that's my first cow shrub. Oh, whoa. never say eyes. Praise God. Anyway, as soon as Peter started uh, looking at the floods or whatever, what happened? The Lord, he began to. But do you know what is, what is comforting about this story? 
As soon as you go back to what you are looking for, guess what happens? You stop drowning. The drowning is not a factor of COVID, of high prices, or you know the removal of uh, the you know whatever is protecting our costs or, or fuel like here in Kenya. It is a factor of vision. It is the vision that keeps you going. It is not the circumstances. So if you keep your eye on your vision you will stay on top of your game. Are you ready to pray now? Let's take some time. Our Father, we thank you because really visions are what you give us to see what you are doing. And when we keep our eyes on come, when you said, come walk with me, come, let's meet the needs of the people in the market this way. Come, let us create jobs for people. Come, when you call us, then we are live with the vision we receive from you. We are now able to stay on top of all the challenges that come in our journey. So today in the name of Jesus, we are asking, oh God, for any of us who's gotten discouraged, or, you know, watching elsewhere, we've gotten into the operation so much that we've forgotten to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've, so, so we've stopped to keep our eyes on what is it we are about? Where is it? The seven questions that we put there, especially our eyes on what you called us to do and where our customer is. We pray today, oh God, that there's going to be a change of mind, a sense, a repentance of, oh God, forgive me, I want to go back to my vision. I pray for teams uh, in the next quarter to begin to discuss what is it the vision was about. I pray for CEOs to begin to reevaluate their place as a vision. I pray in the name of Jesus that individuals will also look at personal vision, personal mission again. I pray that there's going to be a, 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 a revival, oh God. Uh, Lord, that the way you picked up Peter, the Bible says when he said, help me. So Jesus, this is the prayer. We say, help me, Jesus. I pray, oh God, as we cry out, oh God, that you, the Bible says, immediately Jesus got him. Ah, Father, yes, we, we doubted. Yes, we started looking away. But in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, oh, help this marketplace, oh God. The things are difficult. Things have gone otherwise. Oh, help this nation, oh God. Where we are as a nation, oh God, the cost of living is on top. It is in a place we've never seen it before. Help, Jesus. And when we know, when you call on the name of the Lord, ah, thank you, Jesus, we shall be saved. There is not a question, there is not even an iota of thought that God is not going to come. Yes, you will come. And the Bible says, immediately you caught his hand. I pray, catch these businesses where they're drowning. Catch these entrepreneurs where they're drowning. Catch this, uh, uh, your people, oh God. And Lord, I pray that once again, they will walk alongside you in living out the dream and the visions you gave us. Ah, Lord, we give you the praise and we pray revival is coming. Ah, Lord, in this businesses, revival is coming. In this individuals, revival is coming. Hope is going to be reborn and the knowledge, the desire to provide new innovative ideas for next year. Oh, God, to provide new uh, ways of capturing cost, understanding it. New ways are going to be reborn. Father, we dedicate this series to you, oh God, that as we go through the next two months, week after week, oh God, review model after model, that you will send the word, you will send the model, you will send your people, and God next year will find us ready with plans, with systems, with the right resources, oh God, 
to go and get this revival and domesticate it for ourselves. It's not enough to have manna, oh God. It's not enough to have manna coming every day. We've now got to collect it and cook it. I pray you will find entrepreneurs here who not only know how to collect manna, but they know how to collect it and cook it ah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ataro setarama. Ataro satobaha. Ataro kandoma seta. Ataro kamamore kete. Rika, I speak life, oh God. Businesses that are dead, I speak life. Live once again in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, God. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is the next series. This is how we begin. Um, I hope you're receiving the encouragement. Uh, from next week, we are taking off one month from now. One month from now on the 20... On the 22nd and the 21st, Patricia Gay will be holding a conference uh, here, I will be telling you more about it. So every week I'll remind you about it. Patrice is the founder of Nehemiah Project, um, the founder of Biblical Entrepreneurship. Uh, this is a global um, minister and apostle in the marketplace. He will be visiting Kenya and I'd like you to start putting a mental, uh, you know, um, a, a thought there. Uh, I will be speaking with him on this conference. So be ready, be ready, be ready. On those two days, we'll have posters out by next week and we welcome you. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, why don't you also go to Facebook, take that link. We've sent you the link. Uh, Clara, you asked for it. Share it with somebody who needs to uh, look again and see their vision. Next week, we continue with the next model to read. It has been a pleasure to have you here. God bless you all and bye-bye. See you next week. Amen.